Maxine from 64 Wheels, back more diecast, and today we have one of Hot Wheels' newest Fast and the Furious premium releases. So this is a five-car set, just like a lot of the other Fast and the Furious releases. Um, this one brings us three cars that we have never seen before in the premium line. Um, the first one is the HKS Power whoop, Mazda RX-7 from the first Fast and the Furious. This is the car Letty races in her S14, that one, um, as she pulls into race wars in the first movie. The second new one to this line is the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. This is Giselle's car from Fast and the Furious 4 um, with Braga. This is a pretty good looking casting. Even not being a Fast and the Furious car, this looks pretty sick. So I'm excited to open that one. And lastly, we have probably one of the more controversial releases Hot Wheels have done in several years. The R34 in the Brian Supra livery from the first movie. So this is a car that does not exist in the Fast and the Furious universe at all. It is just a fantasy what-if car. If they mix the Supra and the GTR together, we got this one. So uh, I fully expect to see uh, one of the, like the Too Fast, Too Furious uh, R34 silver and blue paint job to show up on a Supra or something else at some point. I don't think this is the last time we've seen them do kind of like a heritage livery on a different car like it or hate it we're going to open it and take a look at it so let's go ahead and bust these open in order and then we'll compare the two returning castings the 67 off-road camaro and the jeep Trackhawk, to the previous ones that were released because there are some differences in those which is cool so like i said this is the first time we've gotten this casting in a premium the only other time we've got it is in the basic this is the walmart line this was from i think 17 2018 so they're the rest of the cars that came in this one um this is a cool casting i like it it's a good casting overall of the rx7 they also used it for dom's rx7 the red one um i think it looks more realistic um in this version because in the movie dom's had like a wing like a big spoiler out back and it had some different ground effects where this one is more like the stock version which his wasn't but the RX-7 that raced Letty was a little bit more, like it looked more like that. So when we compare the basic to the premium, you can see the premium has those beautiful five-spoke, modern five-spoke wheels. I love those wheels. Um, this has the classic just five spokes. The HKS graphics are better on the premium as they should be. Same thing with the Yokohama, and I think that's a Rays logo. Yeah, so they both have those, but they're this one's actually misplaced. So you can see them there a little better, but this car is awesome. So let's go ahead and pop it open. Whoop. <laughs> Hopefully, these are a little bit better. Um, like the tampo quality and stuff is a little bit better than some of the new uh, ones we opened like that because those tampos weren't the best. But these look okay. You can still tell they're that uh, like printed style because you can see the dots. And then they're like the rainbow dots from it actually being like almost like a water slide decal that's been clear coated over um, but it looks good from back here the Rays logo looks pretty good I mean up close it's still not the best the Yokohama looks okay but it's still I don't know the logo like just the tampo work lately hasn't been too hot on uh some of the Hot Wheels it almost looks like it has a metallic chassis let's take a look at the tampos out back uh it's got bumper lights it's got tail lights it's got the little RX-7 Again, that style, I don't know if you can tell that, but it actually has, it's made up of like red, pink, blue, and yellow um, dots. And that's why it almost looks rainbow. Same thing if we have, um, let me see if it'll, if I can see it up here. You're going to see it a little bit in the, oh, in the headlight, um, a little bit in the bottom too. I don't know. This looks, definitely looks like it's got some uh, metallic in the chassis. And overall, this casting looks sick. Those wheels, huge, huge fan of these wheels. But overall, it looks good for being in the movie for like 30 seconds. But to line it up, now we got both. Heck yeah, look at that. But we're getting more. I'm glad we're getting more castings that we haven't that haven't been done before. So, okay, that's not too bad. What's number two? Okay, number two, the 67 Chevy Camaro Off-Road. So this is from Fast... I think it's from fast six or is it seven might be seven i can't remember these once you get past five they all start to like blend into me because i because i was just watching this one the other night um because i love the off-road charger that's probably one of my favorite cars from the franchise in general but 
His casting is pretty good. This is another one of like the proprietary Fast and the Furious castings. Like this was made for this line. Um, they've used it a couple other times in the premium lines. I think it was a man Lucas Oil off road car at one point. I can't remember where else, what other lines they put this in, but this car looks great. It has good detail. I like how they put the tampos behind, even though they really, I mean, behind the bumper, they didn't really have to include those, but they did, including the headlights right there. These tampos look a lot better than the RX-7s, um, just because the car is a little more plain. And I think the, um, like the satin or the flat is a little bit better for tampos. Because that looks much clearer than the RX-7 stuff. So let's take a look at the first version. So if you go back to the movie, um, and it's really quick to, like, it's easy to Google if you just take a quick Google. Um, and the car is gloss like this in the movie. So lately we've seen a trend of Hot Wheels re-releasing cars from the Fast and the Furious especially, and then being actually less realistic to the movie. And this is one of them. So um, if you're going to buy one of these or you like this casting in general, um, you can definitely buy both. But the one that's more realistic to the movie is definitely the first one in gloss uh, because they both have like, they both have the same tampos, headlight, taillights, um, all that good stuff. But if you're going for realism to the movie, definitely the gloss, the first release, which came in the Furious Off-Road in this package, um, is, is better than this one. But this one still looks pretty rad. Um, I don't mind the satin at all. Same wheels, I think same chassis and everything. Um, this one's more of a satin. Or this one's more of a satin, that one's more of a flat. You can kind of see the difference there. But yeah, I would go, if you're going for realism, or like more realistic to the movie, I would go for the original one. Set those both there. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, this is the another returning one. This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. So this is actually, we'll talk about this when we open it. But before, like I usually do these videos, I go back and like brush up and make sure I have all my facts straight or like try to remember as much as I can. And in the screenshots of this one, this one is from Fast 9. Uh, this is the one that, I can't remember what is, like Tej? Yeah, Ludacris's character. Yeah, so they pull up to Dom's house in this car and kind of have the characters like reuniting scene. And when you Google it, you can definitely tell that the car is a flat or a satin color like this, whereas the first one is a gloss. So it's almost like they did it the opposite. So they made the new one on the Camaro flat when it was really gloss. And this one, they released a gloss the first time when it really was supposed to be more of a flat or a satin. So if you're going for realism... Um, like what was the most realistic to the movie, I would definitely go with the flat one, the new one. Um, if you're going for probably the better looking one, um, that's kind of debatable. The I would say probably the gloss one looks more realistic just because it's gloss. It has a little bit tinted window where this one is a little more clear, I feel like. But they have the same tampos, it looks like. Um, but overall, I think the gloss one to me looks a little more quality. I don't know. You tell me. Like, let's see. Look at the Grand Cherokee. I mean, I can't even read that at all. I can barely read that one. So that's that's an L for Hot Wheels on that one. But at least the Jeep on the new one looks pretty legible. That's not too bad compared to the old one. Um, let me see. Look at the taillights. Um... The taillights look the same. They're just on the flat versus gloss. So really this one, uh, more realistic. You want the flat one, you want the new one. If you're going for just a good release of this one, you can you can get the first one because this second one right here looks pretty good. They both, oh, hopefully all these roll nice. Yeah, those will roll nice too. And that looks good in either color. So, okay. Number four, this is the Porsche 718 came in GT4. So this is Giselle's, um, which is Gal Gadot's, character uh, this is what we actually get her car that we're introduced to first time in the series uh, was in fast and first which is fast four that movie has a lot of different names if you look it up online um, some of these do but um, this is the, her car in the movie and this is the first time I think this is the first time this we're getting this casting in general and it looks good it's got the Porsche logo which is not done very well um, it's got little lights up front it's got a black gloss chassis it's got a black because I think the 
I can't remember. There is a certain, this is like a specialty Porsche. It wasn't just the stock one. I believe it had like a body kit or something on it, which it looks like they've replicated pretty well. Um, five spoke black wheels look excellent. It's got the black scoop on the side. Well, I find it interesting that they put the white on the wing. So I don't remember it having white on top of the wing in the movie, but I'll try to put a screenshot if I can find one um, here so that you can see what it actually looked like. But that's kind of cool that they did that. Hopefully that is correct to the movie. If it's not, it would just be odd because it's kind of an extra tampo for no reason. So taillights, the taillights tampos are not the best there. Again, you can see like the different color dots in them. I really hate those style tampos. They look terrible. Like, look at that. They're just really not that good. And it's a shame because this car, this casting is awesome. It really is. It's nice. It's got clear headlights. Looks good. And this is the first time we've got it. The only time we've got it. We haven't gotten it in a basic line or anything like that. So this is the first one. Oh, it's got a little nick out of it. That we're getting for the line. So um, other than the Tampos being subpar, which are kind of are all Hot Wheels premiums right now. This is a great addition to this line. Rolls pretty nice. <laughs> Looks pretty good sitting there too. Okay, very last one, the five, five out of five. Nissan Skyline GTR BNR 34. So, um, I mean, I've I I posted a TikTok about this uh, when it first got leaked because I just had to laugh. Like a lot of people, uh, a lot of people say Mattel really milks the Fast and the Furious line, and I tend to agree a little bit with that because we do get a lot of repeat castings. But this and the Fast Rewind were cars that didn't even exist in the movie. Now, having like a car that's like, you know, a background car or a car that is in a race scene for a few seconds is different from putting a car in a line that didn't exist at all. So in, in terms of Fast and Furious, I had to buy this one because I'm trying to complete the whole line. But this is a car that doesn't exist in the movie. So it's it is what it is. Uh, I don't really like when they do this stuff just because I like the more realistic cars that are more correct to the movie because, oh, I mean, they, they released this when they could have released the Black Civic from the movie, from the first movie or countless other cars. But instead we got this fantasy kind of like trash livery. And I don't mean a trash as in it's bad. It's just not a realistic car from the movie so it's it is what it is so let's take a look at it either way so you can see the graphics on it um it also has that like pointillism style graphics on it um they don't look too bad they actually look i think probably better than some of the actual supras do oh, it's got good detail again the light is a combination the tampos are a combination of like the cyan magenta yellow and uh, maybe purple I don't know when you get real close to them they don't look good like there you can see it's like speckled same thing with the grill inserts they're really not that good um the sides are better there you can see a little bit of the tampo like because these are basically water slide uh decals that get clear coated over there you can see on the side that it got bunched up a little so that's how you also know they're not doing the typical um, like stamp tampo style they're doing the I can't remember what they call them dynamic tampos or something they introduced some in like 2000 they've been using them for a while just the quality has been going down on them but yeah same thing look at the look at the Nissan logo I just opened it and it's like ripped off from the factory the lights don't look very good the GTR doesn't look good I don't know what is going on with these tampos look at that I mean, that's supposed to say California, I assume. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Whatever it's supposed to say is totally, I mean, you can't even read it at all. I don't know. Let me get a closer look. Okay, so let's compare these graphics to the super graphics. So, man, I mean, I really, I think the the GTR has better better graphics they're more colorful they're brighter and that could have something to do with the top the super being a little bit a little bit duller of an orange where the the gtr is super bright orange but it looks like i don't know i would actually say that even though the tampo quality is worse like the dots and stuff i think they got 
like the color is better on the bottom one. The graphics are basically the same other than a little bit different quality. Like his hand looks a little better, I think. I don't know. Let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. Because I would actually tend to say the GTR looks better. And it might be because it's a little bigger. At least it looks like it through the camera. I don't know. Interesting. Either way, this car has been selling out fast. Like, this has been one that people are still grabbing. The GTRs go fast in premium basic no matter what because this is such a hype casting. But let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I'm interested in hearing your feedback on these non-realistic cars. Look at that back window. Holy smokes. Oh. Man, I've been really disappointed with Hot Wheels quality lately. Like that scratch too. Are the other ones like that? Mm, a little bit. Yeah. I'm going back through and we're going to look at them. Yeah, that one's got some scratches. Man, are all these scratched? That one's super scratched. That one's scratched. So those are rub scratches from being in the plastic and moving around, um, but that looks terrible. Man, I don't know. Let me know what you think about Hot Wheels quality recently. It's it's really been slipping um, because I'm, I'm not very happy with the tampos and some of the quality issues on, on these because they're not getting any cheaper. But unfortunately, I'm still buying them, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what that tells you. But let me know in the comments what do you think about the quality recently because look at that back window man that's a shame Ugh. Yeah, i don't know about those but the other cars are cool the despite the scratches they are cool i really like this rx7 i think that's probably like the best looking car in this set just because i actually like that color even though i think the porsche i think uh, GTR aside, the Porsche is probably the star of this lineup. It's just an excellent casting, and it doesn't have any tie-in with the movie like stamped on it anywhere. So this could be just, if you collect Porsches or just like this casting in general, uh, this is one you can buy without having like, you know, some kind of goofy Fast and the Furious tampo on it or anything. But a really nice casting. So let me know what you think of this line. Um, which one of these is your favorite? And let me know also if you like the realistic version of these cars or do you like like the satin non-realistic one just because you like the satin better let me know in the comments because i'll be interested in hearing about that and what you think about some of the quality control issues on these cars or if you've experienced some scratches missing tampos you know like rips in the the graphics or whatever let me know what your experience has been recently with some of the the hot wheels product or mattel in general but I am happy to add some of these to my Fast and the Furious collection. So I'm excited to see what else comes out this year um, from the Fast and the Furious line. Uh, I know there is a 10 car set coming. I know it's in Australia right now. I've seen it on eBay, but it's super expensive. It's like $70 shipped for 10 main lines. Uh, but as soon as I can get my hands on those for a cheaper price, I'll be doing an unboxing on those too. So um, if you're watching this video in the future, definitely check my profile if you're missing the rest of those. Or you want to see some unboxings because that set will include the first basic release of um, Brian's Eclipse from the first movie and a couple other cars that are pretty exciting too. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, Sam64 Wheels, like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Lamely Group, uh, Discord, and whatnot. All the links are down in the description. If you're interested in Fast and the Furious cars, I have unboxed a bunch and I have a ton more to unbox. So if you want to watch some of those, uh, I will link down in the description so you can watch those. Um, and I will have a bunch more content coming soon. So really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.